Good morning. I'm going to show you how to hook up a solar panel as a trickle charger on your tractors. I got a barn here that has no electricity in it. Uh, my tractors sit most of the winter, hardly use them. The batteries don't last very long. I talked to a guy the other day, he said he uses trickle chargers on his equipment. His batteries last 10 years. I haven't been getting that long out of them. So, I took this solar panel off a job the other day off a, a electric fence uh, that I took down, a uh, pasture that I uh, rent for the summer for my cattle, and I was using this to run a fence charger, and I go, well, got this sitting here, let me uh, hook up a charge controller to it. I've got a bunch of long extension cords here that I do use for my lead-out wires now when I'm running. This, um, I was also using this on a water pump, pumping out of a swamp uphill to uh, run a 12-volt pump for cattle. So we got a lot of extension cord, about 100 foot or so. My tractors are way over on the other side of the barn. So one thing I did is I had used wire nuts and taped all these leads together. When I first bought solar panels, I didn't know about these M4 connectors. You couldn't buy them anywhere locally. You had to order them online or go to a solar specialist to get them. So I had cut the ends off. Your solar panels come with these connectors on. The nice thing about them, you can quick connect and take them off. So I'm gonna fix all this and show you how I crimp them. And uh, then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a charge controller I use too to regulate the charge. So that'll be like my battery charger. Okay, so I got my connectors on the extension cord. The other end, I got a couple mini clamps to go onto the battery cables. This way I can run it all the way over to the north side of the barn where my tractors are parked. Uh, what these connectors are, they basically come apart like this. They got a little weather tight grommet here. You, you put this on the, on the uh, wire, you know, strip your wire, put it in there, and then this will insert into these bases, okay? This is actually for the, uh, the uh, positive lead. And there is a positive and negative, you gotta keep track of that. But, um, okay, so I'm gonna go over there and hook this up and test what the batteries are right now and then uh, you know as you can see there's it's a sunny day that's ideally should be outside a little bit farther but i don't want it to get damaged but it's a 120 watt panel it's going to trickle charge over a period of time those batteries and give them plenty of charge even on a cloudy day like this i think that's a seven or ten amp panel so yeah in a couple days on couple big six volt batteries it'll have them fully charged no problem okay so here's my setup ran it all the way over here to these uh six volt batteries hooked in series uh, and the charge is going up a little bit started at 12.54 now i'm up 12.6 so i bet i come back tomorrow you know it'd be nice when a fully charged battery comes off a charger that you're a you're at like 13 and a half volts at least. And you gotta be at least 12.4, 12.5 volts to start a tractor, you know? You're down, if your 12 volt batteries say 12 volts, you're you're already basically a dead battery almost. You're about 50% capacity uh, almost because each tenth of a volt reading, it goes down. It's a logarithmic, I think, relationship. It's not just one tenth, it's actually, it's a lot more, voltage drop than that. I don't know all the math to it. But um, anyways, I got, if you see, I got the 1105. I'm going to keep that, those batteries up. Got the 2705 over there. Get those batteries up. And uh, even my old uh, Dodge fuel tool truck that I take out to the field in the summer. So, um, all right. Thanks for watching. Okay, so actually... There was an indicator light on my charge controller, which I forgot to show you that too. And stupid me, I'm in a hurry to go feed my cattle this morning. Um, I had these hooked up backwards. <laughs> so this lead here is actually the positive. Um, 
This is the ground, goes down in the battery box, grounds to the frame there. Let me show you, I'll take you over and show you the charge controller. Okay, this is the charge controller. And uh, obviously I, this is kind of a Mickey Mouse way to hook it up. But um, this is kind of, I didn't think ahead here. Obviously when I hook these up out on a solar setup outside, when I'm running a water pump or fence charger or something, I put this in a self-contained box. But uh, yeah, I didn't think ahead here. But I just wanted to hook up something real quick from a tractors, but um, I'm going to put some cover over it or something. So kind of protect it from the weather and stuff in case snow blows in. And this is made in the USA, which is nice. Um, and I was getting 13.6 volts right here when I measured here. You know, so and it's very low amperage flowing over there right now because we got just basically no sunlight but I bet by tomorrow that batteries those batteries be charged really good um, you could a lot of this stuff was hard to find when the government was sub so here's what the charge controller is a lot of this stuff was really hard to get a hold of when the government was subsidizing all this all these uh, alternative energy sources matter of fact you'd call these subsidized companies they wouldn't give you the time of day if it wasn't some government sponsored project that you were going to get a ton of, ton of money from uh, they wouldn't help you but now thankfully they cut all their worthless subsidized tax dollar stuff to solar energy and now you can buy some of this stuff locally it used to be you couldn't get a solar panel this 120 watt panel used to be like seven or eight hundred bucks you pick stuff up for like a you probably get this panel for 120 bucks now I just bought some 250 watt panels for 275 bucks so barely a buck more you know more than a buck a lot so um all right got that straightened out